squat. Mine is just a simple split squat with a banded AB or AD duction, depending on how you want to do it. I definitely suggest doing uh, both because it can be beneficial to the need to develop stability in uh, each each uh, um, resistance point. So what you want to start off doing here is taking the band, putting it directly over the knee, and then assuming the split squat position, okay, typically about two feet behind that front foot, and then pretend like you're on a balance beam with your, with your front foot. So they're all lined up. And then from here, you can tell the knee wants to follow that resistance of the band. So you got to fight that using all the muscles that surround the joint, slowly squatting, weight the heel, nice and slow, fighting that resistance. Okay, like I said, try to do both sides. So now, my knee want to come in, okay, using the abductors to then fight that, strengthen the hip, which can then Come on, play Growth plate, right underneath that tibial tuberosity, all right? And one of the things that was happening was my hip was taking control of what my knee was supposed to be doing. So when I squatted, this foot would actually start to rotate out a little bit, and it would put all that pressure on that growth plate. And so I actually worked with a PT over there, and he was actually like an officer. But one of the things that he had to do was just stretch my hips out, which is just doing a sumo squat, so all I would do is just sit here, bring my chest up, and then just use my arms to press up, mobilizing my hips a little bit more. And then from there, I wouldn't do squats. I would just do goblet squats. I wouldn't do any loading. So that kind of helped it out a lot. So, but. Our quad, and these are just to help strengthen your patella tendon to make sure your kneecap is tracking correctly. So you're going to lean back a little bit, pull your toes back so you're engaging your quad, and then you're going to come up off your heel off the floor, getting a good engagement of your quad muscles, you can hold for about five seconds and then slowly lower back down, making sure that you keep um, full engagement of your quad and pulling those toes back. The second one, you're gonna keep your opposite knee, or your opposite leg bent, foot on the floor, still pulling those toes back, and then you're gonna slowly raise up and then lower back down. Just helping to teach the patellar to uh, track correctly. This will squat to a box or bench. You're just going to work on come down an extra slow. When you get all the way to seated, you're going to come back up with two because coming back up with one is going to be much more difficult unless you're able to do it fairly easy. And then it gets to the point where you can go all the way down and back up with nothing. Yeah, I'll be on top of the couch. Um, so this one was like super simple. I was telling them it's nothing like overly crazy, but this seems to work really, really well for my, a lot of my clients. Uh, and what's nice about this, it, it's a dual part. It's also an ankle mobilization. So I call it a knee mobilization, but a lot of people also use it for people that have problems with dorsiflexion of their ankle, like when they squat, their heel comes up. But you just want to sit it here. You're just going to push the knee as far as you can. You want to push as far as you can before that heel comes up. So if you see people that have tight calves and their heel pops up, this won't go very far forward. But for other people that have a little bit better ankle mobility, this will go all as far as forward. And you just want to hold for a couple seconds at the end. People always ask me, does it matter if this foot comes up? It doesn't matter what this foot does. You're just pushing forward, keeping that heel down on the ground, holding for a couple seconds, and right back. So probably the main benefits really that this does is just help stretch out that joint capsule a little bit, add a little bit of grease, some synovial fluid to the joint, which is probably the biggest benefit. And then also helps out with a little bit more ankle mobility, so they have a little bit less lateral shift when they're doing squats, which will help out making their knee feel a lot better if it's in a better position. So, very simple exercise. You can do this before squats or any other leg exercises that you do. So, sometimes your knee troubles are actually coming from your inability to activate your glutes when you're walking or running. So, for mine, you're just going to bring, uh, line yourself up against the wall, bring one foot up, but the other one needs to be as close as you can do it without falling over, <laughs> and then your arms are out to the side. Then you're going to engage that glute muscle and rotate your out slightly your foot does come off the wall and you pause for a second and then you bring it back in trying to uh, get nice and controlled in that movement your goal is to rotate your knee as far as you can without losing your balance so try and stay nice and strong and then bonus you're having to engage on the opposite side to stay vertical so lots of fluid involvement there which can take the pressure off of your knees when you run okay. strengthen that knee area going down slowly add some weight here for this exercise, you do want your knees over your toes, and if you move safely, it'll actually be very beneficial for you in the long run for your knees. 